So, Neil, New Zealand light leathers, I understand you um, account for the, the majority of, of uh, deer hides uh, in New Zealand. How long have you been in business? Uh, we we were, uh, started in 1974, but we were principally lamb in those days, but we've been doing deer seriously uh, for the last six or seven years. And um, uh, so are you just deer or now? We, we are just, we are specialist deers. Clinton Tanner, yeah. And are you the only ones that can really describe themselves that way? We, we think we are. We think worldwide uh, we're the only specialist deers can Tanner, and certainly from the point of view of New Zealand farm deer, we, we're definitely the only specialist Tanner. In terms of, of tanning and the technology you use and so on, are there any special sort of constraints or challenges with, with deer hearts? Well, there's a lot of uh, intellectual property associated with the processing of, of hides. We've come from a lamb background, so we've used our understanding uh, of that to process the, the skins. Uh, th there are quite interesting challenges with deer, but on the other hand, it's a lot easier to process than lamb skin. And you can actually use it for quite a few different products. It's very versatile. It's uh, from very lightweight, 0.3 of a millimetre through to uh, a lovely big spongy 1.8 to 2 millimetre. So where, where are your um, uh, premium products ending up? Well our two principal markets are the European luxury leather goods market. Uh, clients um, would feature companies such as Prada and Gucci and uh, Hugo Boss and Celine and Lancel. Uh, and our other large market is the China domestic market where we actually sell the finished product into China for manufacture into high quality garments for sale in China. So now you've also got here for the conference, especially come out Carlo Sioni from, from Italy. Can you explain to me what his role uh, is for you? Well, well Carlo's been involved in the leather industry for, for years really and he's a family business in Tuscany but he represents us in Italy and France and he was really a driving force for us to, to market Deerskin products into Europe and he's quite a specialist in that area. How have the, the prices been? I mean, obviously for, for venison and, and velvet, prices yeah. have been a bit up and down over the last years. What, what's the price stability been like for, for deer scans? Well, up to two years ago, the, the raw material price for deer was reasonably stable. It's been rising quite uh, significantly of recent time, and the finished articles are also increasing in price. I mean, uh, at, at that end of the market, it's uh, a bit like other commodity prices at the raw end. They've been um, quite aggressively increasing. So, um, are there any constraints on, on um, what you can do as a business at the moment, so for example, in terms of supply or quality? Yeah, the, 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 the two constraints are volume and quality. Uh, there's a percentage of skins which really can't be used for the luxury end of the market. They have to go into uh, cheaper outlets, small leather goods, gloves, those sorts of things where you apply the best technology we can to try and overcome those but we're dealing with open wounds and cuts which are very difficult to disguise. Sure. So would your, um, um, in an ideal world, would you get as much as you could into that premium into the market? Is, is there uh, room to expand in that, in that sector? A absolutely. I mean for us demand exceeds our ability to supply uh, sure. across all our markets. So the deer who's been shrinking a little bit uh, in recent years, although hopefully that declines arrested now, mm. um, what would you like farmers to do to, to maximise the quality of the product that's coming through to you? Well, the, the issue really is uh, the, the open cuts which have occurred two weeks prior to slaughter, and it's unclear exactly where that's happening, but presumably uh, some of it may be on farm, some of it in transport, and some of it in leverage. And, uh, and you know, we'd love to see more effort uh, go into trying to deal with those issues. Sure. Now I understand there's a bit of a seasonal aspect to that as well. Yes. The the unfortunately the the poorer qualities over summer when the biggest kill uh, occurs. The short hair uh, that time means that there are more cuts. In winter, fewer numbers, but uh, quality is much better. Mm. And so, so whether they're red or wapiti uh, or hybrid doesn't seem to make too much difference? They're not identified to us in those terms and we've seen what we think are large wapiti stags for example, but uh, stags of whatever breed really um, can be a problem. They, they can be very large and have a coarse grain and more faults, so it's difficult to draw that conclusion. We don't think there's much difference between them. 
So looking ahead, um, you reasonably confident about the, the, the immediate future for New Zealand light leaders and, and, and your products? Yes, I, I think demand's going to continue to exceed our ability to supply. There's an opportunity for us to uh, extract more value. Uh, we're looking at other technical um, initiatives that we can do. We already supply deer skin for um, luxury automotive into the Audi uh, A8 vehicle, and we're looking at other uh, technical solutions as well. Oh, it's pretty positive outlook. Indeed. Thanks it very is. much. Yeah, that's great. Yeah.